Hello, wait. As always, as I said in the last video I just made, to go live is so strange. Um, hello, I'm Emily from This Yogi Dances. Um, welcome to the first in a 10 week series um, for beginners. Uh, I feel like this could be really helpful too for any student who hasn't done, dug into a little bit more of alignment based practices as we go, um, especially in a vinyasa class, it's hard to do that. Uh, or any student looking to delve in a little bit deeper to uh, the philosophy behind the practice. So much um, in Western yoga, we focus on the physical aspect of the practice, and that is definitely not uh, all that there is. That is not the full uh, picture. So, truly, or factually, there are eight limbs. So if you've ever heard yoga referred to as an eight-limbed practice, you can visualize that kind of coming around uh, in sort of a wheel or like spokes of a wheel uh, with yoga union in the middle. So there's eight different ways to come in to this middle. And that's not necessarily with asana. Asana is just one of the spokes on the wheel that brings you into that yogic union. So that being said, um, for someone who's totally new, uh, I'll be using a lot of Sanskrit words because that is the language that this form was initially codified within. So when we're saying things like utita uh, hasta, paranistasana, um, that's just Sanskrit for standing, hand to big toe pose. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean uh, the pose relates to or the name relates to what uh, the body is physically doing. Get yourself to a comfortable position if you're not already there. You could sit at the edge of a chair if you would like to. Um, you don't have to sit on the floor, especially if your legs are not comfortable in a cross leg position because we'll be here for the majority of practice today. Um, and feel free to come in and out of being seated on the floor. But if you're seated on a, a couch or a chair, try to be at the front of it so your spine can be super long. You're not having a back bend action where my ribs poke forward. You're not having a slouching action where my tailbone pokes forward, my shoulders come. Just try to get super long and tall. Whether the eyes are open or closed, gaze downward for a moment, settling the body, settling our mind, Working to be here right now. We're just going to take five long, deep breaths. This is another spoke of that wheel, that eight limb wheel, pranayama. Literally meaning thread of life. We stop breathing, that thread of the breath in and out, in and out. You see, to exist. So pranayama being the thread of life. Five inhales and exhalations, trying to control it in slow and out slow. This is like step one in this practice to not only being present, but regulating your nervous system. Being present, but regulating your nervous system. Gaze downward, eyes open or closed. Exhale everything out. Big inhale. Big exhale. And just notice how that breath felt. How was your inhale and your exhalation in comparison to one another? Now we inhale one, two, three, top of breath, four. Exhale, four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three. Four, exhale, four, three, two, one. Do one more on your own. Exhale. And keep going, that was five. But keep going on your own as it feels good. Slow inhalation, slow Exhalation. So another one of those 
um, staves of the wheel, that eight-limbed practice, are the yamas. What are the yamas? The yamas are ways of being in the world, of interacting with the world that's out here. Okay? Interacting with the world out here. There's a lot of different ways that people have explained these or interpreted them. The beautiful thing about Sanskrit is that there's also so many different meanings for the same word, just in, based on your intention for what you're talking about. And some words just have multiple definitions. Just keep that little nugget of information right here. Okay, so the first yama, the first way, code, suggestion for living in this physical world, maybe you've heard it, it's a pretty popular one that people quote or that they know, probably heard, ahimsa. The idea, the action, the way of being, ahimsa. Usually, I'm just looking at my notes so I make sure I say all the things I want to say. Usually interpreted as nonviolence. Usually interpreted as nonviolence. But maybe a more appropriate way to think about it, to internalize this, is non harming. Is non harming. How do I non-harm? According to this practice, everything starts as a seed in the mind. So if I have a harmful thought about my own body, about someone else, and that's maybe just like, I'm not enough of whatever it is, X, Y, Z. You, you fill in the blank. There's all things that we tell ourselves that we're not enough of, that we're not worthy of. Um, that we should do, that we could do better, that we should do less of, what non-harming thoughts are you having? Or harmful thoughts are you having? Trying to re-educate ourselves to have non-harmful thought. This harmful thought translates into harmful word, translates into harmful action. Okay? I hit himself. How can we be non-harmful here so we can be non-harmful here? Major reason why I wanted to start uh, with this series at this time, something that I've been thinking about for a long time, but it is so pertinent for how each and every one of us are interacting or not interacting with the world around us right now. This pretty pivotal time, at this tipping point. I did make a choice to wear this shirt today. Okay, so ahimsa, non-harming, starts in the mind, transfers to your words, transfers to your actions and how you are in the world. If you have any questions about this, if you're watching the live video, feel free to type them into the chat. I'm happy to, if you're watching this back at a later date, um, message me. Why not? All of my handles are This Yogi Dances pretty much on everything, even my email and my website. I am happy to chat with you. Okay. Part of our asana today, so that was our philosophical aspect for the day. Part of our asana for the day, and this is going to build each week. So you may feel like, I didn't really, like, we didn't really move today. We're going to do really pointed little things because each week uh, we'll be building to make a whole. All the little parts that build to make a whole. Thing that's super important that doesn't always get broken down in the class, a 60 minute and 90 minute class should you go, is the rotation of the arms, but it is so important for everything starting with the pose everyone knows as down dog. It is important for how you lift your arms in the air and how you rotate the shoulder or not to get everything activated and connected from the top of the body to the bottom of the body. This is also our gateway for being upside down when we're ready to go upside down and even do back bend. Okay, so the rotation of the arm today. 
external and internal rotation in so many different ways, but it's the same principle, external and internal rotation of the arm. So if you just stick your arm out in front of you and feel free to switch your legs and so switch which leg is on top. Taking your arm out in front of you, if you turn your palm to face up and then turn it back down, maybe take your hand underneath your collarbone and fingertips to touch the head of your shoulder and just feel what you feel happening here. Maybe if you exaggerate it and you feel the closing of the shoulder, if you exaggerate the opening, you feel the opening of the shoulder. External rotation, tricep down. Internal rotation, thumb starts to come to the floor. First finger starts to come closer towards the floor. That closes off the chest. So it's not a bad thing. We just have to feel what it is in the body, and then you adjust accordingly. So external rotation, bicep up, tricep down. Internal rotation. I can just do that. So if I stay, this is where we're going next, and feel free to do it with your other arm. If I stay in external rotation with my upper arm, do pull the head of the shoulder back in, down. Feel your lats engage. Take the shoulder out of the socket. Turn it in. Internal rotation. Maybe hold on to the chest. Shoulder back in and down. Externally rotate. Shoulder blade down the back. Did you feel longer and wider in the chest? Good. Hopefully, that's what happened. This is a little bit of work to stay in this rotation and to not affect the rib cage into a back bend or take like a crunchy spine. It's a little bit of work. Can I turn just the palm down? So my tricep is still pointing down. My bicep is pointing up. But can I take my forearm into internal rotation? But when I said... First finger reaching into the floor, flip it back up. Imagine this now, head of the shoulder pulling back in and down, keep it going back in and down, and then do opposite, reach the first finger towards the floor, but forward. Probably made like some fiery work happening in the arm, let that go, shake it out. Let's do the other side. This is a really, 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 really important rotation to not injure yourself in physical practice, especially if you're doing a lot of flow-like stuff, do the other side. Arm out in front, pull it back in and down. You can even lift the abdominals. Turn the palm up, exaggerate that external rotation, tricep down, bicep up. Keep this moving back. It's like someone has a string to the head of your shoulder and they're just woo, pulling it back. And then someone has a string to your first finger and they're woo, pulling it forward. Pressing down and forward, pulling back and down, hold it. Maybe do it one more time. Turn it. Cool. And let that go. So you might even feel your forearm working there. Feeling how that affects farther up into the back, just checking our time. We have so much time. Moving it farther up into the back. And if you need to change, your legs, change your legs. I'm gonna to turn to the side here so you can see. Do you remember when we used to be able to go to the gym? That feels like that was one million years ago. But the pec machine, maybe you remember the pec machine at the gym? Yeah, get your pec on. We're gonna do an imaginary pec machine here. And now feeling how the direction, the directional placement of the arm and the rotational placement of the arm affects the shoulder blade. And if we can keep the strength to keep the shoulder away from the face, his tendency is, as the arms go up, the shoulders go up, my back got scrunchy. I have lost now the connection, the fascial connection, the safe fascial, on your soft tissue connection, not just muscles, but ligaments and tendons, all the way through the body. So if I don't have a safe connection and I try to back bend from here, what T.S. Little would call your release valve is gonna take the brunt of the force of whatever you're doing. So if I have an action like this and I try to back bend, my shoulder head, that already hurt my shoulder, my shoulder head is gonna take the brunt of that and over time I'm gonna get a shoulder injury. These are like, might seem like little nitpicky things, but they're really important for connecting with and using your body in an efficient, and non-harmful way. See what I did there? Connections. 
Take your hand back behind you, underneath your armpit, and hold on to your scapula. It can really like palpate the whole thing, depending on like how much flesh, how much muscle you have going on, but I can at least get that blade. Okay. Now this is my shoulder blade as I take my way into that pec action going away from the spine. As I take the elbow out to the side, feel how the shoulder blade goes toward the spine. Do the pec machine moment, but take the shoulder away from the face, lift the navel up and in, and then squeeze it wide out to the side. This is a useful position, just not in all weight bearing or arm angle situations. Keep squeezing. So as you squeeze here, notice how you go into a little bit of a back bend and you feel your back muscle squeeze. Maybe take your hand to your chest. Do take your hand to your chest. And physically, so even though you're not doing the machine, get the gym workout. Feel your pec working. I just felt all of that fire up. It's hard here at the front of my chest now, but my arm is still back and down. Turn your palm to face forward. See where we're going? We're in that same arm position, but now my elbow is bent. Can you reach your fingertips out in front without shifting anything about your arm, without taking your shoulder out of the socket or towards your face? Ooh, is it getting fiery yet? It is for me. And then can you lift your arm above your head like you were going to do down dog or you were going to do a handstand? Ooh, that doesn't go very far today. That's it. That's it, maybe one day easily, arm goes in line with the ear, bring it down, shake it out. We also just did, maybe you're watching, you just did that self-massage. Hard work to do after doing that self-massage. I'm gonna gracefully, ever so gracefully here, move to the other side. Like Joy and Joy's, we get to do the other arm. Take underneath your armpit, take the elbow wide out to the side, squeeze shoulder blade in towards the spine, and then send the shoulder blade wide. Squeeze the shoulder blade in towards the spine, and then squeeze the shoulder blade wide. Head of the shoulder back and down, shoulder blade down the back, but wide. Turn the palm to face forward, and then reach the elbow in and out of straight. Maybe the arm doesn't even come to straight. Maybe this is as high as the arm goes. Okay. Maybe you can lift it up like down dog. You can lift it up towards the stand. Look how much farther this arm goes. I have work to do. <laughs> Bring it down. We get to do both. Hopefully through my t-shirt, you can see my shoulder blades just for an extra little visual. So, goal post arms. Now we do both arms. Squeeze your pec machine action. Shoulder blades go wide. Squeeze in between shoulder blades back and down. Shoulder blades wide, feel pecs stay top, turn the palms to face forward, and then reach without sending the shoulders up. Reach out for that first finger, head of the shoulder back and down. Ooh, I had some more space there. Pull the shoulders back down and in. I feel back body engaged, front body so slightly engaged, navel engaged. Ooh, exhale, release that. Holy guacamole. That's a fair amount of work. Okay, so in our short little series today, just to review, we'll go backwards. Arm rotation, external rotation, internal rotation. Trying to find the shoulder in the socket, if you've ever heard that in class, shoulder in the socket. You can push through the arm, but that's we work on that later. External rotation, internal rotation, and we'll add in later what that looks like and feels like in down dog. So we're trying to move our bodies in an efficient and non-harming way. Some days in your practice, that looks like going slower. That looks like not taking all of the options if you're practicing with a teacher, maybe. Okay, and that starts from that action, that yama, of ahimsa in the mind, through your words, and then in your actions with the external world. Thumbs up. Cool. Well, thank you for being here today. As always, if you want to share the video, you know someone might find it useful. 
community is definitively important right now. We need it, we need to support it, we need to create it, we need to facilitate it. Um, and if you want to support financially, this yogi dances on Venmo, Cash App, this yogi dances um, at gmail.com for PayPal. Um, whatever you can, if you can, or just share the video. Give to someone who needs it. Um, I think that's it. I'll see you next time. Okay? Thanks.